place. Only one place. All right, so the but it needs to be on the left side of the equation, so we need to flip that one. This reaction needs to be flipped and, and cut. cut in half because so we only want one of them. Reaction. You see, you've got the two right here, and I want a one. So I'm going to take this reaction right here, and I'm going to flip it and cut it in half. So to do that, it's reaction two. So if I flip it, I'll say NO, and I'm cutting it in half as well, goes to, pardon me, what did I do wrong? NO2 there you go. goes to NO plus one half O2. So what I did is I multiplied that by half again, right? But it'd be negative one half because I flipped it, times the value, which was negative 113.1 kilojoules. And then lastly, I have a third reaction. I'm kind of going in reverse order. You don't have to do it this way. It's just that, because I chose this way, I'm just kind of taking the target reaction and going left to right. I see I've got NO right there, and I have NO in this reaction, mm -hmm. but I also have it in this reaction. But we already flipped that second one. So let's go back and look at that one. Since I flipped it, I do have Miss, oh, never mind, sorry. I do have NO already here, right? Mm -hmm. I have one of them. Yep. So how many more NOs we do want I need? We want three of them total. If you look at this reaction, it looks like I need a total of three. So I need two more. Right. Hey, and there's two more right there. And so this reaction is actually good to we can go. We just leave it as it is. I'm going to just leave that reaction as it is. So I will write two NO. Nope. Hold on. I'm doing it backwards. I'm N2 plus O2 makes 2NO, and we're going to leave that right as it is at yep. plus 180.7. Now, let's just double check that this adds up to the reaction that I want it to add up to, because there's going to be some things that can cancel. So if I look at the, uh, first of all, I see N2 here and N2 here. They're the same. I can cancel. They're either side of the arrow. All right. Uh, what else do I see? All right, I see one half O2, one half O2, and I see an O2 here. One half plus one half is one. Is one. So these here cancel this O2. Bye bye. And I believe that's it. I, I have believe N2 so. Two O plus N O2 makes three N O, and that's there the reaction. Is. That's, that's the, the target. target reaction. And so I simply add these numbers up, and mm -hmm. Mr. Sams has just we done it. We get on the one fifty-five positive. point positive one fifty-five point six five. How could you get 0.65, Mr. Samson? Uh, because you divided some of those numbers by two. Oh, so that's going to okay. give us some I extra see. decimal. So uh, from a sig fig point of view, it's probably 155.7. So it's, it's really kind of like a puzzle. <coughs> I see adding reactions as just sort of a big puzzle. Mm -hmm. You just have to kind of flip this, double this, until you get the right answer and half it or whatever you need to do yep. to get the problem. It's, it's Once you do these things, you go, oh, not so bad. Yeah. What I found the problem with students is they have a hard time um, determining which method to use. Yeah, right. Once they know the method, they're good. Right. Okay, Hess's Law version two. This is the easiest of them all, and students love to mm -hmm. default to this. Um, like I said, it's the simplest of all. I put that there. There, there you go. Um, underneath the reaction, write down the values you find in the back of your book, and on page 821 in the back of your textbook, or if you're watching this on internet land, every, um, every, chem book has every a uh, chemistry book has a yeah. book of thermodynamic, thermodynamic data. data. The thermodynamic data. That's a pretty cool word. It's hot. Uh, you add them up by multiplying, dividing. Uh, you can read the uh, yeah, instructions there. We'll you can just read. do some examples. So what I'm going to do is uh, here's a reaction. Ammonia plus hydrochloric acid makes ammonium chloride. By the way, the, the, the states of matter, they do matter. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> okay. Mm. No. Okay. So we're going to look up on the table. Was so there an equation on that last slide, the products minus reactants equation? No, it isn't. Yeah, we should probably write down yeah. the equation for them. The main equation is this. Somehow I thought you have it on the paper. Yeah. So the main equation is the sum of the products. Now, minus the sum of the reactants is equal to delta H. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, this big funky E is a mathematical term, right? Sum. Add it it means sum. So if I th say the sum of girls in a room, let's say my classroom has uh, 20 girls, would be a uh, 20. There it is. 
It's the sum of, you know, so one plus one yep. plus one plus Add one. Up. And the, the, the things right that here. we're adding up, guys, are the heats of formation yeah. of the substances in the reaction. And you look those up in Appendix 21. So just have that open when you're doing these problems. So it's on page A21, the very back of your book. Very so back. In everybody the pause the video, open up your book to page A21. Or if you're an internet land person, just find it in your book. Find it in your book. It is almost for sure yep. in the back of your textbook. Otherwise, hop Table on the internet. Table of thermodynamic I data. Or yeah, you could probably somewhere. go to Wikipedia. It's probably on there. Okay. So anyways, here I want to do is I'm going to look up the value of ammonia. Okay. Ammonia. Now, now, find, now these are organized kind of by sort of kind of alphabetically sort of kind of by element. So ammonia starts with nitrogen, so I'm going to look for nitrogen He's things. in the in category for the nitrogen Now what category? state of matter is it's that? A gas. Mr. That's a gas because that matters because some of these are aqueous in the book here. So the gas is negative 46 kilojoules per mole for the ammonia. Now they're all in kilojoules per mole, so I'm going to just write down the value in numerical and then we'll figure okay. out. Hydrochloric acid is a gas. Or HCl, HCl as a gas. Actually, yeah. So right. is this one under H's or is this under CL? I don't recollect, Mr. Uh, neither Sanders. do I. I'm, okay, it's under CL and it's negative 92. Negative 90. Actually, let me make a quick note about uh, HCl gas is actually not hydrochloric acid. That's true. It? That's hydrogen chloride. Because you see, hydrochloric acid is only an acid when it's in presence of water. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Dissolved in water. And the next one is? Ammonium chloride. Ammonium solid. chloride. Solid. Negative 1, or I'm sorry, negative 314. Negative 314. Yes. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the products minus the reactants. So the products are the ammonium chloride here. So it'll be 314 minus the sum of the reactants, which will be negative 46 plus negative 92. Now watch this. It's important that you don't like add the, or subtract the wrong thing right. because it's the sum. This is like the sum. There's only one of them, however. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's important in this particular reaction, these are all one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratios. If there was a two in front, we'd have to multiply. I think we got an example like that in this. Yeah, it's coming. So we would say the value of delta H for this reaction. Negative 176 kilojoules. 176. And now I'll put my units on there. Kilojoules actually per, per mole. mole. So that's the value. You just take the products minus. It's it's kind of an accounting thing. Mm -hmm. and actually, a thermodynamicist, a person who studies thermodynamics, really for some, uh, for all intents and purposes, is indeed an accountant. He's accounting for. She is accounting for the energy in reaction. Do they wear bad pants and play golf? I don't know. Oh. As long as there's no golf. Oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Sorry, you golfers out there. Um, all right. I actually used to golf, uh, and I gave it up because. So now he likes to do triathlons. I do other things with my life. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and chasing a little white ball and, around. And chasing a stupid white ball. I mean, a little <laughs> white ball around. All right. I still okay. Want, uh, okay. Car out of the middle. This reaction, first of all, um, is purposefully left. Unbalanced. Unbalanced. So we're going to have to balance this. Mm. I have three carbons here, so I'm going to put a three here. Okay. Uh, I got eight hydrogens, so I'm going to put a four here for the hydrogens. And I have uh, six oxygens here, three times two. And I have eight hydrogen, or eight, four, I can't add. Mm -hmm. Six floors, ten, so I'm going to have to have a five, five here. So that's important. Now mm -hmm. we're going to look it up in our table. Mr. Sam says diligently on page A, 21 and following. And I'm looking. I'm C3H8, which is propane gas, by propane the way. Propane gas, negative 104. Negative 104. Now, Mr. Sams, what yes. is oxygen? Oxygen, I, can, I know that without Do looking. Do you not even look at the book? Man? It's just zero Why? because... It is in its elemental state. And it's in its standard state. So yep. you don't even have to look that one up. And five times zero is just zero, so you can ignore the coefficient. Yeah, we got lucky on that one. But yep. carbon dioxide is Carbon gas. dioxide is... Negative 300 and something? Negative 393.5. Yeah. Let's call it negative 394 around your whole sounds good. And then um, water gas, kay. negative uh, water 183. Was it? What is it? I don't know. I'm looking. Don't put, don't, don't pressure me. Gas, right? Yes. Negative 242. Ah, uh, that's wrong. I'm trying to remember these from my memory banks. No. And it was not working there today. Okay. So let's see I don't see memorize anything I can look up on a table. I know. All right. So now I'm going to do the products minus reactants. Products thing. minus reactants. So now watch this. The products are right here. Mm -hmm. And there are coefficients. So yes. they matter. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm going to say 3 times negative 394, parentheses, plus... 4 times negative 242, parentheses. And I'm going to put a bracket around this. This is my reactant. Yep. Minus products. My, pr my products, pardon me. And I'm going to subtract my reactants, and that's just going to be negative 104. Because this, I can ignore the oxygen, because that would be 5 times 0. And, of course, everything times 0 is 0. Yep. And then you just put it in your calculator. And you get negative 2,046 kilojoules per mole. And that's a pretty big number. That is, but if we think about this, look what you're doing. You're combusting propane. 
Yeah. That's what many of us heat our houses with around here. Yeah, so propane, yeah. or maybe you've got a propane gas grill at home. Propane has a high amount of energy in it, which would make sense because it is uh, a combustible fuel and it right. is used for energy purposes. So yep. this is a high number, but um, we would expect a high number for something that is traditionally used to heat things. Or cook meat. Or cook meat, mm. yes. Or to whatever, yeah. Propane has lots of uses in our world. Okay, now... Um, now we want to briefly talk about um, the last bit here. Some things that I find is can be very confusing for students um, is that there are so many varieties of delta H, yeah. and they get all buggered up on these. Why do you take physics and you learn about K? Yeah. It's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's not scare you away from no. physics. But there are a number of ways to look at this whole thing, and I think we're going to go on a blank screen on this one for visual purposes. Um, but I want us just to a little bit that to define every value of delta H yes. or every uh, term of delta H. Delta H F zero, which we've already done, but we're going to put this all in one table. Yep. Is the heat of formation? Yep. More specifically, the standard heat of formation because of the little yeah. zero up there. And again, that's the amount of energy um, associated with the reaction uh, forming a substance from its elements. Now, what's that heat of vapor? Heat of vap looks kind of like vaporization to me. So that's the amount of heat required to turn something from a gas, I'm sorry, from a liquid into a gas. And its opposite cousin is... Hold on. let's do something okay. else, Mr. Sorry. Sams. What we mean by that for heat of vaporization, so if I have water and it's a liquid, and I took an arrow, and it turns into water as a gas, or water vapor. It actualizes its gaseous state. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm getting better. You're very good. <laughs> the energy required, you see, this is endothermic. It will always be endothermic. Uh -huh. um, so it, it will always be a positive value. So the heat of vaporization is the amount of energy it takes to vaporize one mole of a particular substance, water, right. liquid to water, gas. It could be iron liquid to iron gas. It wouldn't matter. But... Um, the, the examples we've just given were chemical reactions, but there is energy involved in a physical change. Correct. Water, liquid, turns to water, gas. Yep. And then the cousin of heat of vaporization is the heat of COND. And that right. does not stand for condiments. No, nope. condensation. The heat of condensation. Yeah, it's not the heat required to put mustard on your hot dog. Although some mustard can be very It hot. can be pretty spicy. Yeah. I and actually learned the chemistry behind that. It's pretty fascinating. A gas to a liquid. So it's actually this reaction here that I just in did reverse. in reverse. So, so that's going to be exothermic. This, if you go this reaction in reverse. Now, that's a very weird thing. Actually, you know, we should say a minute about that. Hmm. If you go from water gas and you go to water liquid. Exothermic. That's why it hurts so bad. Steam burns. That's why they're so violent. Because not only do you get the temperature going into your hand, but you get this this heat that gets released when it goes from a gas to a liquid. And it's a lot. And that goes into your arm as you burn yourself on the steam. So would you rather, Mr. Sams, that I pour one mole of boiling hot water on your skin, or would you rather if I had one mole of steam to come across your skin? I want the boiling hot water. Even though they're at the same temperature, I'm not going to get this heat of condensation applied to me as well. As you see, you get, what happens is if he, took, if he chose the uh, boiling hot steam, or <laughs> the boiling, just the steam, is this extra energy right here would yeah. also be on there, so he'd get burned doubly bad. Mm, at least. And in fact, I would argue it might so. be more than double. Yeah. It probably be... We could even do the math, but we won't. That's yeah, another chapter. That's another chapter, but it would be a big number. Yeah. All right. All right. More delta H's. Delta H, comb, C-O-M-B. That is yeah. not the amount of energy it takes to brush your hair in the morning. Yes. This is heat of combustion. Combustion? What does that mean, combustion? Combustion is when we react something with oxygen. Usually it's a hydrocarbon and it turns into carbon dioxide and water. Like a Cho compound mm -hmm. plus oxygen makes CO2 plus H2O. And it's always, by the way... These reactions are always exothermic. exothermic. So the value of delta H will always be negative. So that propane example we gave a minute ago was an exothermic reaction, mm -hmm. which is always negative, um, these reactions. So a lot of students get confused because the heat of combustion, like if I say the heat of combustion of propane, actually I'm going to slip back to that screen. I think that might be easier. When we did this right here, this is what I see students get mixed up. Oops, that's the wrong screen. Um, this screen. When they see heat of combustion of propane, what I mean is I mean this number, the negative 2046 mm -hmm. number, but some students will think that what I'm referring to is the negative 104 number. No, that's the number. heat of formation. This right here is the delta H F zero, where this number here is the delta H combustion. 
okay? If you see heat of combustion, it's typically a very big number, not a very small number, because of course combustion reactions are typically quite large. Okay, so now let's talk about our next one. What if I say, hello, I must change here. Delta H, zero, and I have a particular chemical, and I put CH4 as just an example. What does that mean? Um, that's a good question. What do you mean by that? This is the heat, actually, of formation. Oh, duh, I knew that. And now I'm specifying... Of, of that particular...